What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I want to talk about checkboxes with Kinter and Python. All right, in the last video we looked at sliders and this video I want to look at checkboxes. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so check boxes. We've already looked at radio buttons. Those are those like round buttons that like let you select from different things. Check boxes are square boxes and they're more just like on or off, right? So uh, they're very similar to radio buttons, but there's a couple of little tricky things involved and uh, it's kind of a little bit weird. So we're going to take a look at that in this video. So I've created a file, I've just called it check.py. I'm going to save it in our GUI directory. And this is just the basic starter code that we've been using forever. So first things first is we need to create a Kinter variable, just like we did with the radio buttons. And Kinter variables are a little bit different. In order to get their um, value, you don't just call the variable, you call like the variable name dot get. If you want to set the thing, you usually say the variable name dot set. You know, we've looked at these before. So we're just going to create one called var. And it's, we just go var equals and then just declare the kind of variable that you want. So we want this to be, whoops, int var, right? So, you know, with kinter variables, you could have integer variables or you could have, uh, for instance, string variables. But in this case, we want int. We're going to actually change this in a minute. But the reason why we want int is because when you check box, when you check a box, the value that you're assigning to it behind the scenes is either a zero or a one. And one, I think, means you've checked it and zero means you haven't checked it. So those are one and zero are numbers, they're integers. So we use int var here. So to actually build a checkbox, I'm just going to call it C for checkbox. We just go check box, uh, button spell. And the same thing as always, we want to put it in root and, you know, put the text as anything you want uh, check this box, I dare you. <laughs> right? Now we need to assign the value of the variable name that we're going to use for this. And we're going to use our var variable. So we just type in variable equals and then set that equal to var. Now there's a couple other things you can put on here. And we'll take a look at those in just a second. But just for right now, uh, let's go C dot pack, pack this guy on the screen. Now, I mean, we can save this and run it. So let's go Python check dot pi, pull this over. And you know, we can check this and yeah, it does stuff, but it's not actually doing anything, right? So to actually see what's going on behind the scenes, let's just create a little variable real quick here. And what do we call it? my or label, did I say variable? Label, we want a label. And we we'll set that equal to label. And then what root and the text we want set equal to var dot get, we want to get what's in that variable. And then we could just pack it on the screen. And I think that will work. Okay, so we save this and come back here and run it. This is not a great solution. But we can see right away it's unchecked and it's zero. If we check this, it won't update. We need to actually create some sort of function in order to do that. So let's go ahead and do that real quick just to see. Let's pull this back up. And what? Let's just create a button. My button equals a button and go root and the text equals show selection, I guess. All <laughs> right. And then what we want this to have a command equals to show. And let's just come up here real quick and create a show function. And we could just change this to this. All right, so when we click this button, it'll run this function, and it'll show this and update it. So I think that will work, we need to pack this guy on the screen. I always forget that. All right, so let's run this and see. So check this box, I dare you show selection zero. If we check the box, 
one, 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 zero, 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 zero. Okay, so that works and that's how you do that. So that's basically the functionality of the checkbox. Now we can get into some other weird little things and we will just now because why not? We're having fun here. Uh, but uh, I mentioned at the beginning that we're using this int var. We can change this to string var. And if we do, we can, the default is zero or one, but we can change that if we want. We can have the output be anything we want. We can change it to pizza if you check the box, right? It doesn't have to be one. If you don't check the box, it could be, you know, John, like whatever you want, you can assign. And you do that down here when you create your check box or check button, whatever you want to call it, just by defining the on value. And then let's just call it on or the off value equals off, right? So if we check the box now, instead of it being one, it'll be on. If we don't check the box now, instead of it being zero, it'll be off. Now on its face, this seems pretty simple, but we can run into some problems. And let's just see by running this. So if we save this, remember we've up here, we've changed this now to a string variable. Why? Because this is no longer zero or one, it's on or off. And the words on and off are strings. So we need to change our variable to a string variable. So let's go ahead and run this and see. And we're going to get some problems here. First thing right off the bat, you'll notice the box is checked by default. And before it wasn't checked by default. I'm not sure why that is. But if, now if we click this, nothing happens, right? That's weird. Now, but if we uncheck it and then click it, now it says off. If we check it again, now it says on. So what in the world is, is going on here? Well, I don't know. This is a little glitch I've discovered. I did a little research. I couldn't figure out what, what in the world's going on here. It's obviously printing something on the screen because there's space here, right? But I have no idea why. And also this is, un, this is checked by default and we don't really want that. So the way that I find as a workaround is to right up here at the top, when you first define this thing, before you even pack it onto the screen, we can use something called the deselect function. And it's just deselect, right? And that does exactly what it sounds like. It deselects it by default. So if we save this and run it, pull this over, the first thing you notice that it's not selected by default, which is good. Now, if we click this, it says off right away. So that works now. If we uncheck it and click it, it says on right away. There's no big space in here. So nothing weird is going on and that works. Now we can test it again, run it one more time. And this time start off the bat by checking it and that works. So um, I have no idea why that is, but it just is it's one of those weird little kinter things that you just gotta sort of remember. So on off, that's pretty cool. Like I said earlier, we could totally mess around with this and call the on value pizza and the off value hamburger. I, I don't know, <laughs> like, right? Let's run this again. Check this box, I dare you, pizza, <laughs> hamburger. You know, like why in the world would you wanna do that? Well, you know, come back over here and let's go uh, super size. And then here, let's go regular size. you right. So, and then here for our string, where we define it, check this box, I dare you. You could say, would you like to super size your order? Right? Check here. I don't know. <laughs> right? So if you got an, an app where you're ordering food online and you'd like to supersize your order, you could check this and boom, now it's, you know, it's supersized, something like that. So those are check boxes, an awful lot like radio buttons, but you know, with some little bit of differences, specifically this deselect thing and that weirdness around that. I have no idea why that's the case, but it is. And uh, it's a pretty simple workaround. So, so that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com. We'll see you in the next video.